so much for coming in to have a chat today. Um, I'm really interested to learn more about the role of radiation and the treatment of cervical cancer. Radiotherapy is necessary to treat locally advanced cervix cancer. So large tumours or ladies who present with nodes, positive nodes in their pelvis. Radiotherapy is made up of two parts. External beam radiation treats from the outside. And then the other half we give via brachytherapy, which is internal radiation. So we can place small applicators inside the uterus to irradiate the uterus and cervix from inside. Very conformal, sort of shaped, field of radiation that doesn't go too far beyond the cervix and uterus so we don't cause too much toxicity. Absolutely necessary to cure cervical cancer. It's also really looking at populations as well and being able to treat as many women as possible and certainly there's a lot of places in these low middle income countries where we need to just get radiotherapy in there as well and then once that's established to get into the specialised training with brachytherapy. Just seeing so many women and so many of them even very young with these late stage cancers that they present because they've got really dreadful symptoms as a result, for example, fistulas and leaking urine. And it is a, a tragedy because the lack of health services means they do present late. They don't have sufficient imaging services or even pathology services to get an early diagnosis. It was really devastating to see. But I have seen women who came back years later after having some radiotherapy and are very well and have had really positive response from the radiotherapy treatment. It's the pressure of population that really struck me, the sheer numbers of women and then these hospitals that are completely overrun with patients with very few machines and resources to treat them. The equipment that was available to the, the hospital, some of it was very, very unsophisticated, some of it was very old, it was in poor repair. So it, it's a huge burden of disease and um, with the WHO's resolution, there's three pillars and treatment is that third pillar. Could you reflect on how you think the world's going to rise up to meet this pillar of treatment? We have to do it in a way that they can access the treatment. I think that's really important. The gold standard to plan brachytherapy is MRI. And you can imagine how difficult that is to access. It's expensive, so we have to be realistic. What have you got available? How can we show you to use that more effectively? Peter Mack has done a lot of research using ultrasound. It's affordable. You can see really well with it. And we're trying to find a way to make that transferable to these lower resource settings so that it's more accessible for them. So it's looking at each setting and trying to tailor solutions unique to what is available in that region. We are privileged as a nation to have a gynecologic oncologist. We have the first Zambian who is doing that. We also have a US a certified gyne oncologist who's helping us. But if we only have two people catering for the country, that already is a problem. So there's a bit of lag in ensuring that these women are on treatment and they're getting their radiotherapy, their chemo radiation on time as well. What sort of innovations do you think might become available, if anything? Well, I think modern technology does help. These newer machines, even though they're expensive, they are more efficient. So they do allow for a greater throughput, so that's, that's a positive. What they also allow us to do is to target the tumour even more efficiently than we have in the past, which ultimately saves money down the track because the lady gets cured and doesn't suffer from side effects and remains a productive member of society. So the bigger picture, it is cheaper to treat these women than sort of care for them as they slowly die from this insidious disease. Radiotherapy is the definitive treatment for the more advanced cervix cancer and to be able to achieve that is really building up those resources and it's not just about the infrastructure and the equipment, it's about the human resources as well and without the workforce, all the infrastructure in the world won't help that. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done in that space. There's been a study done um, called Embrace. Can you tell me a bit about that? 
That was a remarkable study conducted in some very advanced centres around the world. It was really looking at the impact of the image-guided brachytherapy and how that related to treatment outcomes. And that showed us that we can really, really improve treatment outcomes, 92% five-year local control rates unheard of before, very ambitious and something to aim for. They also improved overall survival rates, there's 74% in that group of patients that were um, studied. But what we now have to do is find a way to disseminate that and make it accessible to regions of the world where that burden of locally advanced cancer is much higher. Is radiotherapy and brachytherapy something that can be personalised to each individual woman? Yes it is and that's what the EMBRACE study showed us, that if we used imaging to totally shape the radiation field to that particular tumour in that particular lady, um, you can improve outcomes because you're targeting the tumour better, you're also sparing the surrounding organs at risk and reducing toxicity so she can go on to lead a very fruitful life. I think we can't forget really how tragic it is for anyone to be suffering from and dying from cervical cancer in this day and age. We know how to prevent most cervical cancer now with the HPV anti-cancer vaccine. We know that if cervical cancer uh, changes are caught early, the treatments are very uh, simple. And we also know uh, if we have treatment available and we're caught early, even with invasive cervical cancer, women can be very successful in their treatment. Cervical cancer is one of the only cancers that we've totally figured out. We know what causes it, we know how to screen for it, we know how to treat pre-invasive disease. So really no woman should be dying of cervical cancer.